On today's edition of the EMA's Knowledge Series, a conversation with the EMA Greenleaf Special Awardee, Susan Lacan Batiste. Susan Lacan Batiste's contribution to conservation in Trinidad and Tobago extends over three decades. In 1990, Susan and other community members worked to reduce poaching and slaughter of leatherback turtles on the Matura Beach through the approach of converting poachers to conservationists and champions for sea turtle protection. Susan was instrumental in the formation of the NGO Nature Seekers, where she has contributed initially as a member, but rose to leadership roles as managing director and chairman. Nature Seekers' efforts in sea turtle protection led to Matura Beach being designated a protected area during the turtle nesting season from March to August. In 1997, resources were sourced to begin the first ever sea turtle tagging program in Trinidad and Tobago. This method of tagging allowed for the identification of individual turtles and supported the collection of additional information. Susan's work went beyond the reach of turtle conservation, having led a team of community members to restore over 500 acres of denuded lands in northeast Trinidad through the National Reforestation and Watershed Rehabilitation Program. Susan has served as a board director of the Turtle Village Trust and the Ministry of Tourism, as well as the vice chair of the National Sea Turtle Task Force. She has been instrumental in promoting the Nature Seekers model of using natural resources as a tool for conservation through ecotourism and co-management. Susan has presented the work of Nature Seekers to groups around the world and has been recognized internationally. Susan Lacan Batiste, welcome to the EMA's Knowledge Series. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Congratulations as well on being the recipient of one of the EMA's Greenleaf Special Awards in 2020. It was presented in 2021, and we now have an opportunity to chat with you. We've spoken with each of our special awardees thus far, and today you're in the spotlight. So we're happy to have you, and once again, congratulations. Thank you. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Susan Lacan Batiste first off and find out your, your, your earliest attractions to environmental issues or environmental um, activities and what really caught your eye and um, uh, attracted you to conservation work here in TNT. As a um, daughter of a single mother, my father died when I was not even three years old. And uh, we, I have a lot of siblings and most of our activities was in the forest or in the river or on the beach. And um, that lent to a, a love for my, um, my passion for the environment, for being out there, for um, enjoying that um, fresh air and so on. And being on the beach, I observed that the turtles were being killed in large numbers. There was a lot of carcasses on the beach and so on. And it really pained me to see that this creature so huge and magnificent was just sometimes no part thereof was missing from these turtles. Just a few pounds of shoulder meat sometimes, all the eggs in their belly. Um, it was really horrendous. And the stench really um, was a deterrent for me being out there in that fresh air that I used to be. And um, I said, you know, something needs to be done. And then the government called for the country. I saw it on the news for citizens to come out and, and to be more, more responsible because of the fact that this was an endangered species. I learned that um, all about this animal, it was a species that if we didn't take care of it, we would lose it forever. And uh, I wanted to do something. So when the call came for citizens to partner with the government, it was something new and different in our country. I took the opportunity um, to become a part of that uh, effort that would help these creatures. As a result, um, a lot of other community members in Matura was quite interesting and Nature Seekers was formed as a result. I remember when I started with a few other members, remember the beaches was then designated prohibited in 1990 by the government to curtail activities of free for all access, free for all activities because people was, 
would go and ride and steal eggs and kill these animals. So the, gov the villagers was really upset. They, they felt that their rights was being taken off and um, they couldn't do as they wanted anymore because Matura itself was part of the problem. Our parents and so on, they were part of the poaching, the activities. It was like a cultural and recreational thing for our forefathers in that people would go, I remember they would book an eddies, meat, kill these turtles. Even in the early stages, turtles were being put on the trucks, the, the tray of trucks and taken into Port of Spain market. So it was a, a big thing in the community. So to have um, new enforcement, a big paradigm shift from not taking at all and protect, protection was a really um, a deterrent in the community. So I remember going out to patrol at night and walk. I used to walk from Matura and then that four point kilometer of forested area to gain access to the beach and they would jay and laugh at me and and said that you know nothing positive could come out from that um we needed like biologists um scientists to come in a community girl like me couldn't really um do something positive um that couldn't happen at all so i was called turtle police mother of turtles all sorts of name and so on but that didn't deter me and the few of us who was really strong-minded and being um, taught and given technical um, advice from the forestry division. Because I remember in the early stages, there was no financial support for conservation wood. And we started being very ambitious and enthusiastic. We started doing all night seasonal surveillance of the nesting beach. I remember getting into physical fights on the beach with poachers, staying long hours to deter them from killing the turtles they would be there with buckets and cutlashes and so on and we will not go home because if we left the turtles would have been killed so it took a lot on on our human resource on our physical um, capacity to be able to be there out at nights and a turtle season is for six months march yes. to august so it's a lot of effort that came as a result of helping the country in this dilemma to protect the species. What would you say was a big moment, a, a game-changing moment? I remember in 1993, when, um, I, when I started with the other members of the community, I loved to write, so I would document things, you know, and send to the forestry division, the wildlife section, and said, you know, if this would be done, if this, um, we would have regular um, visitors being accompanied by guides to make it mandated and so on. And I would write, I would walk the entire beach and collect data, measure the turtles, write on findings, things that I would observe and so on. And then in 1993, I got a telegram stating that I won this international award. It's the highest environmental award in the world. It's a Global 500 award. And I had to go to Beijing, China to receive that award. When that happened, um, I recognized that the head had submitted my name and the work that I was doing on Matura Beach. So when that news went out to the community, a lot of people said, well, you know, it's not useless. It's, it's, it's something that is good because to go to China to receive an award like that, it, it, that broke a lot of ice. It, it created a lot of respect in terms of um, being um, given the opportunity to be awarded as a community girl, someone who had no background in conservation or marine biologists, so just wanted to make that change. So the community was really proud and a lot of changes started to take place. Did more persons come forward or was there now an appreciation um, to learn what you had learned, well, even knowledge transfer, or even other agencies now seeing the work that had been done and now wanting to be part Definitely. of it. Definitely. Based on our conservation um, um, persistent and consistency and so on, um, we were recognized. It wasn't just like any more fly-by-night group who many groups was formed and fall apart and so on. But a lot of um, corporate bodies, I remember in the early stages, our first set of t-shirts after being trained by the forestry division and with the 
the, the wise words of Dr. Carol James stating that, listen, Susan, we don't, the state don't have money to pay a salary to you and, 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 and your other colleagues. However, if this resource is used wisely, it can create long-term and meaningful sustainability. And that was a good approach because I believe her and we didn't go on empty promises or we wasn't promised financial or any monetary benefits. Yes. It, she was upfront. The state didn't have this. And if you did, you would do this, this would work. So we got support from Aliong and Augustini after being trained technically by the wildlife section in tour guiding and how to take care of these animals. Um, with our t-shirts from Aliong and Augustini, we got our brochures printed by them, some call cards and um, batteries and stuff from Shell Chemicals. And they were the first set of corporate people that came on board and started to do a lot of sponsorship in terms of supporting that need that we have. Because as I said, it was strictly based on a lot of voluntary um, activities to help in the protection of the turtles. So a lot of um, corporate bodies came on. And then in 2002, we started because more and more we became more um, recognized for our work. The slaughtering totally stopped. It became a thing of the past. Matura was no longer classified as a graveyard, but it was now an active maternity ward where tons of turtles came and nest. And it was a place now was ready for ecotourism where people and animals was born in harmony, um, using it sustainable and educating the public about this awesome um, prehistoric animals that exist right in our backyard. So we got a lot of sponsorship in terms of um, the use of batteries, flashlights, um, uniforms, and so on, to be able to look professionally and to conduct ourselves in a manner that will depict professional behavior. One of the notes that I have refers to the commencement of turtle tagging. Just for yes. the benefit of the citizen who has not journeyed to Matura, or who may be hearing for the first time of all the work that Nature Seekers has been doing over the years. Can you walk us through the process of turtle tagging? Turtle tagging came about um, because after many years on the beach, we just didn't want to um, have enforcement and education, but we wanted to learn about the species. And this happened as a result of hearing turtle migration route and pattern. And the only way that could have been done is by placing tags on them. Nature seekers have now so much developed into our strategy to understand the species. We have different type of tagging. We have our flipper tags. It's an external tag that is placed on the rear flippers on the left and right um, flipper on the trailing. And there's a soft area that we put uh, a titanium clip with T for Trinidad, a five digit number and a return address. So someone who encountered these turtles, they can send back and tell us where they have been seeing these turtles um, because we learn from our tagging that turtles do internet. And then we have a pit tag. It's a passive integrated transpondent tag. It's like a, um, a rice grain and it's inserted via a needle either in the right or left upper shoulder. And this tag have a lifetime tag retention. Unlike the flipper tag, we just have about five years because you find barnacles will grow on them um, and we have to replace them or they will be lost. But the pit tag, once that turtle comes in, you can scan her and you will get that number that identifies that particular turtle. We will then enter this in our database. We measure also the length of the turtle and the width because leatherback is an elusive animal. We only see them when they leave as hatchlings and return as adults. We keep, and when they start laying, we can measure them and see their growth rate, learn about their pattern, how, what if they come every two years or every five years, and we learn more about this. So by tagging an animal, we learn about their particular trends, their, their, their growth rate, we even have a fitness program where we weigh them, a big tripod, because you would learn that turtles nest every nine to 10 days. So the same turtle that visit Matura on a nightly basis, she will come up 
over a period of seven, as much as 11 times, she can do that within nine to 10 days intervals. So we will read them to know if they're losing weight in our waters um, while they're here, if they're getting adequate food, what is happening with them. So with the tags, you can tell that, and that is a number that is specially is, um, assigned to that turtle. No turtle will have that number. So once you put it in the database, you can pop up and see what day she came in, how many times she came in, um, how many visitors viewed that turtle, um, our beach is zone off. We have 18 zones, and each zone, zone is 1,400 feet. We can tell you where had the highest de density nesting, uh, where erosion is impacting. And at the end, we can show you the economic benefit of the turtle alive rather than dead. Because when a turtle is killed and gone, there's no revenue to be generated. But with our data collection, we can show you Every time the circle came, how many people were around her, how much time she nested, how much time she came in for the season, how much time she came over a period of years, and how many rev how much revenue was derived as a result of that turtle being alive. We also have a satellite um, tracking device where it's placed on the ridge, the center ridge of the turtle. So we can learn our migratory route and pattern. When the turtle leave our waters and go back to Canada, we can actually show you all the different route that she's taking because turtles must come up every 15 minutes to breed. And as a result, you get all of the signals that it make into a draft. So we can show you how much time it takes for her to reach up, um, how long, um, which area she's passing, what is happening with her. And, and this tag is very costly and is sponsored by the Canadian government because they work with sea turtles at sea and they recognize that the captive, the 100 percent 60 percent comes from trinidad so hence the reason they wanted to learn more and the tags are sponsored by the canadian government has the dream surpassed expectation it it has definitely because as i said when i started the beach was like a graveyard i i could not envision um, tourism being on that beach. It was so unappealing. The stench that emanated was horrendous. Um, never in my mind, I knew that we were told that this could happen, but I didn't think that now that where we stand, having um, researchers coming in Matura, having students coming um, to determine their correct choices, having um, volunteers coming to contribute in a positive level to environmental conservation. Um, when I look back and having my community laugh at me, and I remember standing in our office space on the Tokumain Road with having, um, we had Carl Safina, someone from um, National Geography, a whole team from Duke University and so on. And I said, never had I envisioned that so many professions, professional professions um, would have come together for one common goal, to see the turtles and to work with them at Matura. So yes, I would say that it is beyond what I expected. It's, it's and, I am, and I'm happy and privileged to have lived to see after more than three decades, the reality of what one positive thought can actually hatch and grow. The EMA saw and was present for a presentation of data collected migratory patterns, um, areas of risk, um, potential loss of species in 2020. To my recollection, I believe this took place just before the stay at home measures of the pandemic. Tell us a little bit about that study and if possible, has there been any improvement in where there would have been concerns between last year and this year based on the data collected and perhaps even the fact that uh, the human race has been uh, restricted from getting to beaches per se um, in the nighttime? And we'll talk a little bit about those who still continue to poach even yes, after um... the restrictions. But tell us about the data collected there and whether there has been any improvement from last year to this year? Definitely, um, it was difficult. We started on a bang because 
we already had the researchers in and we had to ship them out by March of 2020. That was a big disappointment with the rude introduction of COVID-19, you know, um, it because one, our community is highly dependent on all of these activities for survival. It's one of our main income generator. And yes, we had had um, a lot of red tapes and protocol, but we persisted. We taught it best and we invited the Minister of Health. He came and stayed in our community and he went on to the beach and we showed him the length of Mutura Beach, how we had a discussion in terms of how important our data collection is to make any statement. There mustn't be glitches or any um, um, long period of no data collecting. It will definitely affect any any possible papers or any possible statement that Trinidad in a, in a whole have to make in terms of this species. And he readily saw how important it was. He accepted that this, the area on the beach was wide enough that we would not have um, any um, too much big grouping or anything like that. We even started with having uh, of this year, 2021, 2020 was a total no-no. But with 2021, we wrote our letters, we agitated, we got other groups to um, give support to lend support to our plight of total conservation. And we ex we got the exemption, we got our curfew passes, we were able to go out and started the data collection again in 2021. Um, we went on, we even had an extension for the month of September to look at the hardship tables as well. So with that um, introduction to the minister in terms of coming to see what was done, because we felt that we were just being placed in a big vacuum with everyone else and not understanding the role and function. So inviting him and I was, um, I commended him that, you know, he accepted and he came out. Sometimes it's so difficult to reach the ministers at a community level to, to be able to, to highlight or showcase our intent and, and what we really want to do, and it's in the best interest of the country. Um, definitely, it was a good thing when he came, and he was able now to see it in a different light and to give the permission with confidence that we will do what we wanted to do and what we do best. Where do you go from here? Uh, where do we go from 2021? And... Let's place some of the realities on the table. The planet will live with a virus. Perhaps mm -hmm. there are advantages um, for uh, those involved in any kind of nature preservation and conservation of species that you can then have even further measures around, say, Matura or even other parts of the East Coast where turtle nesting uh, continues or has perhaps resumed in some way, form or fashion. But there are people who might understand still continue to take, um, to ignore measures, take risks and attempt to invade all of the work that's being done by nature seekers. Has there been the police support and presence to one, mitigate persons invading the beaches and two, protecting nature seekers and the turtles so that the work that's being done now can continue? I must say that um, we have had a lot of support from the police. We have a strong relationship in terms that whenever a sergeant or corporal changes, we will immediately introduce ourselves, let them know what nature seekers is about, what we have been doing and so on. And we have been getting a lot of support in terms of um, the protective service, our police service. For the gay wardens, we have a really good relationship. We work closely together. We learn from them new strategies, um, whatever existing laws. We work close with the conservator of forests. Um, even I have been nominated or given the opportunity to serve on the cabinet appointed um, total task force. Um, which I learned from a lot from the other persons from UV and all the team that is there. And we have a really good relationship in terms of um, training, understanding, capacity, technical advice, technical support. Um, so that is working well. And we have been making a lot of requests through this, um, this, this new entity that has been formed. 
we also have TVT and PHP and all the other corporate bodies who are now agitating and putting in how important it is for our work to continue so that we can remain and make proper presentation based on our data collection. So definitely we have been doing, we have been agitating, we have been writing letters. Um, one of the things, however, um, that I would recommend is that we have a proper funding for sea turtle conservation. Yes. Sometimes you do acquire some, and when the period is over, there's a lot of glitches in the data collection when um, it, there's no fun to continue. And a, a product as important as this leatherback turtle, we really need to beef up and to really be consistent in terms of our, um, our, our support to being able to collect data. Tags of itself is highly expensive. All the equipment is expensive. Being out there in at night, it's a lot of work. And to be really serious and to make a statement, at present, leatherback turtles are in a lot of trouble. Um, Trinidad is the hope. Most countries has depleted. And all eyes is on Trinidad and Tobago in terms of what are you doing about this species. It shows that in Trinidad, we need to be more serious about sea turtle conservation if we want this species to remain in, in its natural environment for all generations to view them. So is there an opportunity for volunteerism and is there an opportunity for fundraising or donations on the part of the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago because we are in the spotlight in a, what could be considered positive manner? Definitely. Um, some weeks ago, we had sent out um, a plaque because just as is right nature center we at nature seekers is really struck for cash in terms of our activities is not just curtailed but shut down because we deal a lot with the public in terms of we generate our income to guided tours our kayaking our turtle watching everything has been put on hold and we cannot support ourselves pay our bills it's difficult even we are working right now again on strictly volunteers terrorism and um definitely we have had a lot of support recently with the influx of sagasum we were given um an atv to scotia bank it's a hundred thousand dollars to re help remove the sagasum to make it safe for the turtles to nest successfully and we have been given uh, a grant from bhp to have the the bin and the rake made to take out the sagasum from off the beach. Yes. And just uh, about two days ago, we were given a grant from Republic Bank to purchase a vehicle to be able to support this initiative. A lot of proposal were developed. Again, we have submitted another proposal to the Green Fund. Yes. And we have been writing to a lot of corporate bodies. They were very instrumental prior to COVID. We had Coca-Cola, uh, Malabar Farms, EOG coming and having extensive beach cleanup activity with us to remove all the debris, all the plastics from off the beach um, as a part of a corporate um, responsibility. I encourage more of corporate TNT, private sectors to come out and to support this initiative. It gives everyone an opportunity to be an ambassador for sea turtle conservation, for placing us um, at the the forefront in turtle conservation and creating a safe place for turtles to nest and to reproduce successfully. We have been having a lot of support from the university, UV, UTT, um, um, ISPS, a lot of schools, a lot of um, organizations and so on. Um, Nature Seekers have really, I remember having over 2000 volunteers prior to COVID cleaning this nesting area. So I must say that corporate um, bodies, the citizen of Trinidad and Tobago has really supported us over the years. And we call on them and we let them know our plight. We are really in serious financial um, dilemma and we are calling on corporate Trinidad, the public, private government to really help us do what we do best in terms of making turtle conservation a big reality and continuing to learn to be A question for you with regards to that. Um, whilst we know that the turtles have a cycle, 
on an annual basis, um, mm -hmm. you really require the level of financial and other um, types of support, volunteer support, etc., on on an ongoing annual basis. Um, the question is this: it's exploratory. Uh, would there be not advocating congregating? Could your appeal facilitate on an ongoing basis annual contributions on the part of society, corporate organizations, and schools, youngsters, even families in our society? Do you see this as something that would augur well for the work of Nature Seekers going forward? Definitely. It's one of the um, ideal solution to the existing problems because we have our team in Nature Seekers is conservation through experience. Right. We love to have the citizens come and experience conservation in its fullest sense. Come on and tag a turtle, breathe some fresh air, walk on Matura Beach, understand the species, interact with them. We realize that it brings about a whole trend of new learning and appreciation for the resources. Walking through the forest, understanding the trees, um, they have been identified by our tour guides, um, observing all COVID protocol. We were trained by CAFRA. We are ready to, to reach out and to work in this pandemic because we realize that it's something that would not go away. It is something that um, is wishful thinking. By God's grace, we understand that we need to work with whatever we have and to observe these protocols to do everything humanly possible to ensure that people health and safety is adhered to based on all protocols and not deter the education drive, place them in um, responsible grouping um, and do a, a, a really outreach and bring back people from the houses where we sit now and we are always in the home based on COVID, but come out into the environment. The fresh air is good for our lungs, you know, it's Indeed. one of the remedies for COVID. Yes. And um, while we have an appreciation for the environment, our presence will create an awareness again any would-be poachers or um, perpetrators will know that, hey, they're in the forest. We cannot take down the forest illegally and quarry illegally anymore because um, everyone is restricted at home and so on. So it will bring about a lot of um, satisfaction, um, physical um, well-being, and, and the value of our forests and our animals will be once realized again through education, through our guided tour, through conservation and experience. Thank you for that. And and I hope that citizens Trinidad and Tobago, corporate Trinidad and Tobago, can see the opportunity to reach out to nature seekers and even those other entities that we have in our society that have obviously fallen on difficult and uncertain times because of the pandemic to, to make a contribution. I wanted to ask a little about the National Reforestation and Watershed Rehabilitation Program. It's in the notes that basically um, you've been involved, instrumental in. Yes, um, can you share much. a bit about this? In 2004, we partner again. We recognize at Nature Seekers clearly that partnership is very critical and essential in the development of our community and the protection of our resources. In 2004, we were given a reforestation contract, and to date we have reforested more than 600 acres of deforested lands that was under attack by forest fires, illegal quarrying operations, slash and burn agriculture. But when the pandemic came in 2020, that as well was shut down. But um, the, 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 impact on the community was overwhelming in that people who were charcoal burners were drafted into this workforce. They were taught about how to protect, how to preserve, how to plant, how to nurture these plants. And a lot of changes, you know, the accomplishment in the community is to see that um, perpetrators, people who, were, who thought that, you know, I'm creating a livelihood for my family, by taking down the trees and burning charcoals and so on, they were drafted into the employment scheme. Mm -hmm. And a lot has changed. We don't we have some charcoal burning in Matura still, but not to the extent that existed. We we saw people who 
didn't care about the environment or didn't understand the role that tree plays in our lives, then they understood by planting them, nurturing them, sending them into courses and um, educating them about different um, vegetative um, system, our, our ecosystem, our type of forest, um, how long it took a tree to grow and so on. And they learn and it has changed, forever changed. And I'm proud to say that is one of our greatest achievements again in terms of our forest, the care and how, how much respect has grown in terms of um, their interaction, their involvement, the, 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 the everything that bring about that change, that positive change within communities who were just um, perpetrators or doing it for some form of livelihood without knowledge. So the reforestation really was something that did complement nature seekers and by extension our community. Today, because of our absent, we have lost a lot of our forestry legal quarrying. It's sad. Um, we had partnered with UTT to send out some articles and to write a, a press release in terms of what is happening in Matura. Hundreds of acres are being lost and, it's on, in a, and it borders our prohibited area. It borders the area where turtles are nesting. And it's so crucial because of the, the rivers is polluted. It brings a lot down that can impact on our turtle nesting success, the hatchling success of the leatherback turtle. Yes. So it is it is really, really um something that we hope would come back, that our community will then be placed back in an employment level to be able to take care of this precious resource. We believe clearly that when the last tree would have gone, mankind will be no more. Let's look to the future now, uh, Susan, and talk a little bit about nature seekers in the next three to four years. Are there any major uh, plans, programs or activities that you'd like the society to be aware of? And then you as an individual, as this major game changer in the lives of, of turtle conservation, in the lives of um, reforestation, in the lives of just preserving uh, a better space for Trinidadians and Tobagonians to enjoy. Um, what happens next for you? So first nature seekers, any major goals? And then on to you as, as key um, opportunities that you may want to achieve. Tell us. At present, at nature seekers, we definitely want to continue our conservation effort. We want to create sustainable livelihoods for the residents of our community. We um, would be more than willing to continue taking data. It's something, you know, as a task, you have a task and it's finished. Con total conservation is ongoing. It's something that will never finish. It's never, it's never ending. We would want to be able to do that. Hence the reason we have been writing to our corporate bodies, which has responded. We know that the health activities with COVID-19 has taken the front burner and most fundings went to, to the, towards that. However, we had a few corporate bodies which has come on to take care of the sargassum problem so our turtles could nest. We want to continue removing the sargassum from off the beach, um, making it safe. We want to continue collecting our data. We want to have all the tools to be able to tag our turtles because that in itself is highly expensive. Our pit tags and flipper tags and the resources for our, our, our staffing, our patrols, our interpreters to be able to function in those areas. It's a night thing and someone who work at night cannot function and have another job, day job and continue strictly on volunteerism. We want to be able to have a, a, a platform in social media to be able to highlight all our activities, what we are doing and how volunteers and corporate bodies and, and private sectors can get involved to support this meaningful and long lasting conservation initiative. We definitely want everyone to have an experience with conservation on Matura Beach. Take time out to come and plant a tree, take time out and come and clean the beach. Be, be active, understand that the environment is dependent on us. We are custodians. It was given to us by the Almighty to take care so that we can live in harmony with fresh, clean air and coexist in, in, a, in, in not invading in each other's space. 
um, nature seekers want to continue to bringing researchers to understand and to develop more project in terms of what is happening with our turtles, the status of sea turtles at an international level, to include um, decisions to be able to write papers, to share these data with everyone who are aspiring into that field, and to help shape the, the, the career um, opportunities, someone coming on Matura to learn about the species in, in terms of becoming a marine biologist. They have the opportunity to do so. It's safe. There's turtles, the resources there. Um, we are there. Um, we can offer support to them in, in aspiring to become the next generation that will care and protect this species and to do other things that will make them cognizant of the environment. And they, their academia can help in propelling a better place for all of us to live in. If this pandemic is not dealt with in a professional way, we don't use the opportunity to continue, we will be like stepping back 30 years ago. And we it's, it's been too much commitment on the community part to volunteerism and commitment and dedication to revert to where it's lost. Yes. It's, it's very sad because there's not a, a financial amount to say where well, this was contributed um, to bring this to this stage and now it's lost. It's, 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 never, it's not recorded. It's human contribution, selfless, dedicated hours that went into building the system. We at Nature Seekers, we want to continue that. We will want to continue our research. We want to get, for, for me, after being three decades, I would like to see someone as passionate as myself and the others in terms of being zealous, being passionate and being doers and not seers of the environment. Yes, this final thought, you know, that there is no dream that is so large that it cannot be accomplished right. if you believe, if you believe. You know, like our motto said, together we aspire and together we achieve. A group of people with a similar vision for sea turtle conservation in Trinidad and Tobago came together 31 years ago and by working together was able to educate the wider public and encourage people to get involved thus resulting in a reduction of slaughtering and heightening interest in protecting the animal and its environment. Once community take this model and improve whatever resource exists within their community, the country of a whole will become better. I believe that if every community take care of their resources, use a model, whatever resource is within it, our country will be a better place and a safer place to live and have a greater appreciation for where we reside. I want to tell Trinidad and Tobago that it, it was tough, difficult for me as a woman. Um, a lot of people said, you know, it's not a place for a woman to be out at night, interacting with poachers, getting into physical fight. But I want to say that um, I would not do it differently. And having the opportunity to receive this special award from the EMA. It tells Trinidad and Tobago that community people can make a difference and we can be recognized and it gives hope to others who one day will be recognized as well and their work will be highlighted and people will understand that we can be the change we want to see in this world. Susan, with those closing words, I want to thank you very much for sparing the time and to share your journey over the last three to four decades of experience and encounters, not just in the preservation of a species, but certainly in keeping parts of Trinidad, in particular, golden, special, precious. From all of us here at the Environmental Management Authority, once again, congratulations. And two, we continue to support the work of Nietzsche Seekers in whatever way possible. So continue to be in contact with us and may God continue to bless all the work that has been done thus far for the organization and for your good self. Thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. It was an opportunity. Thank you. You've been viewing another edition of the EMA's Knowledge Series. Thank you for joining us. The IKEA Corporate Recycling Program 
testimonials from some of our partners. I am Sherry Kali and I am the Human Resource Manager for Non-Destructive Testers. We are committed to the prevention of pollution through the use of processes, practices, materials and products that avoid, reduce or control pollution. This initiative by iCare made it possible as it clearly outlined a 10-step plan for implementation of office recycling, which tremendously assisted NDTL in aligning the implementation of this initiative to its overall goals and objectives as it pertains to the company's environmental policy. Key steps in iCare's recycling plan Establishing a sustainability team Labeling and positioning recycling bins next to waste receptacles Installing recycling signage and implementing a communication strategy to encourage staff participation. I am Travis Geyer, HSC Rep for Trinidad Systems Limited. IKEA was able to assist in re educating exercises by highlighting the positives of recycling. And as a technology provider, the IKEA Recycling Program ties in with our e waste management program. At TSL, we do have a declaration to adhere to the HSC requirements of our clients. This has proven successful as an essential part in preserving value partnerships. The guided layout, which includes the five W's of implementing an in-office recycling program, offers a greater relationship in the partnership between the TSL Group and IKEA. The five W's are essential in helping our corporate partners appreciate why it's important to adopt a green policy inclusive of recycling. Who are the key internal and external actors to engage? What recyclables are collected by the project? How IKEA supports the internal setup of recycling systems? And where to deposit collected recyclables? My name is Alicia Denny and I'm a lab tech here at the Institute of Marine Affairs and a proud green team member at IME. Um, the eye care program was started in 2016. We thrive to create safe environmental practices here at IME. We basically started off with trying to foster the three basic R's, reduce, reuse and recycle. And the eye care program really helped establish that in a workspace made it more uh, accessible. It's a multidisciplinary institute, so we do a broad range of scientific research and as such we're fully aware of the impacts that solid waste and other type of maybe chemical waste would have on the environment. So it's in our mission and vision to prevent such or mitigate such pollution. So of course we will try and implement certain programs that will be beneficial to achieving this task and the iCare program was one of them. Adopting the iCare system here at IME has allowed us to fulfill our obligations to the Green Policy and we had a lot of support from our line ministry, Board of Governors and of course the senior members here at the IME. It has allowed us to become examples for other organizations and we're very proud of that. We invite corporate TNT to be our partners in environmental sustainability. Take the voluntary step to implement in-house recycling with our support and share IKEA's message of recycling and environmental conservation. We look forward to having you on board.